Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the Outlook.com or Outlook.live.com email encryption feature. So that way you could send encrypted emails and attachments to uh, other people. So the catch is um, it works differently depending on if you're sending it to another uh, Office 365 Outlook.com user compared to like an external user like Gmail or Yahoo or something like that. So in this video we're going to try and keep it simple because it's kind of complex. So our main user here is going to be Todd Sims at Outlook.com. He's going to be sending the encrypted messages, and then he's going to be sending it to Cindy Sims 007 at Outlook.com. So obviously she's an Outlook user, and then to an external user, Cindy Sims 007 at Gmail.com. So he could show you how the uh, how that acts differently depending on who you're sending it to. Okay, so let's do a new email here. Do Cindy, our external user, our Office 365 user, put in our message here. So we're going to encrypt. There's encrypt and there's encrypt and prevent forwarding. So we're going to do this one so I can show you how they both features work here. So now we're going to attach a file. We're going to browse this computer. We're going to do this brochure. So this seems to only work for, uh, at least with attachments, for um, office type files. If you try and attach a PDF or a text file, it doesn't seem to work, at least not for me. So, and I can't find out if that's um, really how it's supposed to work or not, but it looks like it is because it'll encrypt the uh, office files as well when you send them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and send this to both of them. Okay, so we're at uh, the Outlook user here, Cindy, so we'll wait for this message to come in and we'll check it out. Okay, so here it is. We can open it up here. So you can see, since she's an Outlook user, um, she could read it without having to you know, enter a password or request some kind of permission. And for the file here, she could open it in her browser and preview it like that. And then if she downloads it, to the desktop. Okay, and now let's just go right to the desktop here. So now that she opened it, so Todd was the one who sent it, it was his file, and now that she tries to open it outside of her uh, email, it wants her to sign in either as Todd, who his Microsoft account here, or request permission from Todd to even open it. So uh, kind of like an extra bit of safety there, so she can only preview it. Okay, so let's go back here. And then you can also see how forward is disabled, so she can't forward this to anybody. And if they did, they wouldn't be able to uh, read it anyways. And that's because I'll show you how it works with the external person here. So we got Cindy and the Gmail account here. So now you see when she opens it, she just gets this. She can't see the contents of it and she can't see the attachments. So she clicks on read this message. And there's two options here. So you could either use your Google account to authenticate it. So if you're logged in with, with the account that it was sent to, you're fine. Otherwise, you'll have to log in with that account or you could get a passcode. If you do that, you just have to go back to your email, wait for it to come from Microsoft. Copy it in there. And now you can see here's the contents of the message. There's the attachment. And you can't forward it. You can reply, but you can't forward. If you, if you try and preview it, it says it can't because of the permissions there. And of course, you could download it. And if you do, you're going to have the same problem uh, we just saw when you try and open it from your local computer because it's encrypted. So there's that. And so now let's uh, go back to that email here and do the read the message and then use Google. So since Cindy was signed in with her Google account here, it was opened it right up. So like I said, if she wasn't signed in, then she'd have to log into her Google account and then she'd be able to read it. And then you see the same thing here. So that's how it works for an external. So hopefully that makes sense. So like I said, we sent it from this guy here with the attachment. 
the Outlook user was able to read the email without having to ask for a password or log in and so on because they're logged into their Outlook account here. They were able to preview the Word attachment in their browser, but if they download it and try to open it, they either need to log in with the owner of that um, Microsoft 365 account or request permission from that user. And then for the Gmail user, they get this kind of generic message, and then they either have to, well, now that it's on there, once you log in with your Gmail, then you're good for a limited amount of time until you sign off here um, for like other emails or reading the same one. So if that wasn't the case, then you'd have the option to request a password or just log in with your Gmail account, and then you're good to go. And then also, if you do the request a password, and I don't know if you saw it, there was a checkbox that said trust this computer for 12 hours, so you could check that box so you don't have to ask for a, a security code next time. So hopefully that makes sense. So that's kind of the basic overview of how you use the Outlook.com encryption. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Thank <music> you.